G'day, welcome again to Dateline, and the last time I looked, I'm George Negus. Tonight, the ghosts of apartheid. The murder earlier this year of the infamous white supremacist leader Eugene Ter Blanche is fueling calls for revenge from the remnants of South African racism. 3,000, 4,000, 5,000 must die there. Fascinating, that's later. Back in April this year, Eugene Ter Blanc, the founder of the AWB, South Africa's white supremacist Africana resistance movement, was brutally murdered in the bedroom of his remote farm, allegedly by black workers. Not unexpectedly, Ter Blanc's death has provoked anger and paranoia in both white and black South African communities. It's all an unfortunate echo from the apartheid era the Rainbow Nation would rather forget, particularly given the post-World Cup euphoria the country's been enjoying. French reporter Zoe de Boussier filed this report for us. It's April in Ventersdorp, South Africa and people have gathered to grieve for a man they considered as a leader. Twenty thousand Afrikaners have travelled from all over the country, even from overseas, to pay their last respects to Eugene Tablanche. As a tribute, the mourners burst into the old national anthem, the one from the days of apartheid. And a preacher stirs the crowd. Daar is er geen ander rustplek voor jou graf als die bloeddeerdrenkte aarde van Zuid-Afrika. Hier die land is ons land. Het nooit ooit. Men on horseback ride ahead of the hearse. A tribute to their leader, who was famous for appearing at political rallies, sitting astride a black stallion. Eugene Ter Blanche founded the AWB, the right-wing African resistance party, in 1973. For years, he threatened civil war to maintain white rule in South Africa, amassing as many as 70,000 supporters. Since the end of apartheid, the supremacist movement declined in power, keeping largely to itself as the Rainbow Nation has struggled to reconcile its violent past. But everything changed on the 3rd of April this year, when Terre Blanche was murdered. As white confronted black once again. Please are sensitive. Okay. This is not a party we are standing here. We are grieving. Do you know what he's grieving? And now they killed the main bull. I wouldn't laugh, sir. What, what are you laughing? What's the smile for? You smiling, what you smiling for? Don't smile. Don't smile. That day, at Terblanc's farm, even black policemen were considered partly to blame for his murder. Why doesn't that rule? And the AWB was reborn with a newfound legitimacy to seek revenge. White man on his farm. White people are waiting in South Africa to be killed like animals in a row at the abattoir. If this continues, we will also kill the black people who comes to us, who tries to kill us. We will also kill them and we will also keep on beating them, their, cor their corpses, like they've beaten Mr. Tablanche after he was dead. 
the white leader's death was indeed exceptionally violent. A few members of his family agreed to show us where he died. We were let into his property and driven to a small house where Terre Blanche sometimes napped during the day. According to the police, Terre Blanche was sleeping here when two of his black workers came into his bedroom and hacked him to death with a machete. The murder weapon, even the mattress where Terre Blanche died, were quickly removed by police. Here you can see the blood on the bed. It was penetrating through the mattress. The whole mattress was completely soaked in blood. The murderers came in through this window, softly, without any noise. He was fast asleep. Terre Blanche supporters insist the murder was racially motivated. This is what the, the, the Rainbow Nation, what they called. This is what they do. Rainbow Nation the dream of a new beginning for South Africa. A place where blacks and whites could live together in peace. But here, in Ventersdorp, Terre Blanche's hometown, it seems that dream was stillborn. The day after Terre Blanche was killed, in front of the white leader's farm, we met Hans, a neighbor. This is not the one, the first one. There are plenty of it. And but I, but I know this guy, and he was a really good guy, <clears throat> an old man. I respect this guy. Do you think this could happen to you? It can happen to everybody. To our neighbors, it happened about three weeks back. But they catch the guys before they can do it in the garden. <clears throat> Many white farmers are armed and ready for violence. Hans told us but many have died too. The day after that, he led us to a place that means a lot to him. A memorial for all South Africa's white farmers who've been killed since apartheid ended in 1994. You can see all the provinces in South Africa. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine provinces in South Africa. Here are all the names of the guys who's been murdered by black guys in South Africa. Now, Eugene Terblanc, this guy's death is number 3,338. 3,338 murders in 16 years. That is one white farmer killed every 36 hours. This guy was producing maize and giving uh, food to the country. Now they are gone. They are gone. Plenty of those people are just murdered for nothing. And for every killing, Hans says there's a growing sense amongst Afrikaner farmers that they are becoming more and more vulnerable. Look what is happening. If it is going on like this, all the farmers will be dead about 20 years from now. All of them will be dead. The farmers might feel like victims. Yet, they still own more than 80% of South Africa's land. Hans and his father Thijs live near Ventersdorp. Their family settled here a hundred years ago, breeding cattle on the 7,000 hectare property. They were comfortable and secure. But all of that has now changed. They murdered my brother five years ago, so we break off. You can't stay on the farm. So I buy, I buy a, a, bought a house in town, and we live in town now. And you can't, you can't, look here, where is the nearest white people here? Where? My farm here, 14 kilometers up that way, 15 kilometers up that way, 10 kilometers up that way, before there's another farm. So uh, uh, by the time these people came to help you, uh, you're dead already. How can you, how can you live here? After his brother's murder, Tice decided to destroy his own house. 
so it could never been used by black South Africans. Now, all he wants is revenge. It, w it won't help the white people in South Africa, the white South Africans, to start shooting with guns. Forget it. Because they've got the army, they've got the police. We're gonna wait till big uh, places came together, uh, like on a soccer stadium. And then? And then we're gonna blow the whole thing up. And 3,000, 4,000, 5,000 must die there. And that's how we're gonna do it. That's where, there's no other way. You can't go and, and try to shoot, 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 shoot. Three, four, five, ten, twenty people. F forget it. You must kill them massas, massive. And that's how we're going to do it. When he refers to killing, Thais knows what he's talking about. He used to be in the army, and he runs a second business in addition to his farm. Fifteen kilometers away from his land, he owns a shop. A special shop, the town's biggest amori. Here, with his wife, he sells weapons and gives shooting training to his customers. He has more than 19 different guns just for his own protection. White customers, but also black people, come to the shop. Despite the end of apartheid, a wall of miscomprehension remains between the two communities. Yeah. Okay, hold this phone, he's on his way, okay. These two customers want to sign up for shooting training, but Tice is less than happy to deal with them. <laughs> Though he knows black people usually don't speak Afrikaans, Thais makes a point of talking to them in the Boer language. You know what is the difference between show a person a gun or point a person a gun? Can you even call this and wees for a man a weapon and point him a weapon? I can't even African style prat. I can't even African prat. But I can't even do African prat. Now say me, I can't even African prat. I have to English prat. So I have to do with my English prat. Thais seems unable to hide his disdain for these customers. All right. So you want to speak English? Well, then, when will you point the person a firearm? It's a reminder of the past when white people would only speak to black people to give them orders. Now, both groups have to coexist. But there's no hiding the tension and paranoia that remains. I mean, look, look at the forms, what's going on here. It's, it's terrible. The rape cases, it's terrible. I don't want to be raped. You think you could be raped because of your color of skin? <laughs> I can't really say what I want to say. But you can think. All right, thank you. Eugene Tablanche's death has sharpened these fears and the open contempt whites have towards black people here. Even in their townhouse, Thais and Hans live barricaded. They say many of their friends and neighbors do the same. And they're embittered that they're losing the land they believe belongs to them. They say that the white people took their ground. We not took the ground. We fight for the ground. It's your ground. Of course it's our ground. Of course it's our ground. The Bible said it's our ground. The Bible said it's our ground. We fight for the ground. And God gave us the ground. The ground and the creatures that live there. Tyson and Hans show us a room to demonstrate their point. Dozens of South Africa's rare species are displayed here, trophies from 30 years of hunting. Uh, there are 29 
different kind of boxing South Africa and I shoot them all. But this room is also a metaphor for his deepest conviction. White and black people are two different breeds. They should never be permitted to mingle. In the field, not this buck mixed with that one. Not this one mixed with that one, but they're on one farm. So now the question is, why must I marry a black woman? I can't marry a black woman. Never. It's against my brain. It's against the law. I'm not mixing, I will never ever, I die before I go to a black woman. That night on TV, the Terre Blanche murder case dominates the national news. Politieke partijen oor die spectrum heen het die moord veroordeel en een oproep gedoen om kalm te. Die AWB wat vroeger verklaar het dat er die moord op sy leier sal vreek, het een paar uur gelede sy dreigement herroep. A dag voor die hoofdverskyning van die twee verdachtes in die saak het die beweging ook een oproep op sy lede gedoen om kalm te bly en nie die reg in eie hande te neem nie. Five days after Terre Blanche was killed, the murder suspects are brought before court in Ventersdorp. Hundreds of police are sent onto the streets with fears that the trial will trigger violence between blacks and whites here. Almost a thousand people gather in front of the court. Supporters of Eugene Terre Blanche on one side, black people on the other. All you have to defend, come on. You make them holes, man. Farmers are not the enemy. Racists are the enemy. Oh, so when you kill a farmer, you only kill the racist farmers. Farmers are not the enemy. I want to ask you, racist all the farmers the that are murdered are all racist. Because you must know... I asked you a question. I asked you a question. No, no, no. The farmers that I'm are murdered are all racist. You, I'm, tell, I'm saying to you, those who kill farm workers are the enemy. Well, give those me one. Those who continue to abuse and call us Kaffers. You are not prepared. And we are you, not are, you are not prepared to answer the question. I'm talking to Sister Two. I'm talking to Sister Two. The sky and I are friends. Do you mind? Jy, jy breek die onderneming wat ons in die politie gegeet. Um, jy praat nie met die pers nie, jy verdraai jy self. Wie sê kan nie met die pers praat? Asjeblief, wie sê kan nie met die pers praat? Nee, wie sê kan nie met die pers praat? Sy recht, hy kan oor jy sal wel die waard. With tension building, the Afrikaners break into a song they know will provoke the black community. The old anthem from the days of apartheid. the blacks sing back, but with South Africa's national song, the symbol of Mandela's liberation. Anthem versus anthem, black versus white, a bloodless street battle pushing tensions even higher. Then, the Africaners town their crowd with this. A song comparing blacks to monkeys. The insult is too much and a fight erupts. Police struggle to keep the two sides apart. It's the very rage and violence South Africa has been trying to put behind it for the past 16 years. Then, suddenly, Something else attracts the public's attention. The two murder suspects appear outside the court after the trial was adjourned until later this year. They are cheered as heroes by the blacks in the crowd, saviors amongst the community that had feared Eugene Terre Blanche. And it is clear, once more, that here at least, the idea of a united South Africa still has a long way to go. These two young men, they take us out of, you know, the lion's mouth, man. We are almost about to die, then right now, we are cool about him. I am I more than free. I feel more than free. Never be free.
And we uh, thought that sort of mindless racism was behind the struggling Rainbow Nation. Well, if it makes you feel any better, my contacts tell me those people are a very small minority. Let's hope they're right. And uh, meanwhile, there's a biography of Eugene Ter Blanche with uh, more background to that story on our website, sbs.com.au slash dateline.